I want to call your attention to a very familiar passage of Scripture, Psalms 34. And we'll commence our reading tonight at verse number 8, Psalms 34. And I'll be reading from the English Standard Version tonight. The Bible says, O oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blesses the man who take refuge in him. Oh, fear the Lord, you his saints, for those who fear him have no lack. The young lions suffer want and hunger, but those who seek the Lord lack no good thing. Verse 19 reads, Many are the affliction of the righteous, but the Lord delivers him out of them all. Verse 20, he says, He keeps all his bones, not one of them is broken. Again, verse 19 says, Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivers him out of them all. Very briefly tonight, I want to talk to you from this subject very simply. Won't he do it? Won't he do it? Won't he do it? Brothers and sisters, many of us and probably most of us have been traumatized by some of the recent images that we have seen on national television. And specifically there in our border states, one of Texas, where we saw the Haitian population trying to come to rescue, and yet they were sleeping under a bridge dealing with inhumane situations. Can you imagine how they must have felt trying to flee a country that is known for poverty, a country that is known for political unrest, a country that is dealing with so many issues and earthquakes and storms, and all they want to do is get to a place of safety and rescue. So you can imagine how they must have felt, felt trying to get over here to the United States only to be met with further opposition. And I'm not here to have a political debate about our borders, but I do want us to understand the feelings and the emotions that individuals have to feel coming to, on a journey only to get to a country and still be in a desolate situation. And when I thought about that, brothers and sisters, I'm mindful of a story, particularly of a, a lady named Yvonne. Because Yvonne in Florida now, who took the journey all the way to America from her country just for a chance to have a wonderful life. But see, Yvonne didn't have a great story getting here. She didn't have a wonderful experience. As a matter of fact, it took multiple days, months, as a matter of fact, for her to make it to the United States. Not only was she stuffed on a crowded bus, but she had to render money to smugglers that only turned around and robbed other people after surrendering their money just to guide them to the United States. She said as she was walking, part of her voyage took her through 50 and 60 miles of a jungle where she bypassed deceased people on the side of the road. She saw individuals getting raped by those that were supposed to protect them. She watched devastation her entire journey. She said there were places where you were walking around a mountain and one step over, you could fall to your death. Water came and washed people away. Snakes were biting people. All she was trying to do was make it to the United States. Oh, brothers and sisters, but I'm happy to report that Yvonne, along with Jimmy, made it to the United States. And there they sit in Florida interviewing on the news. And when they asked her about her experience, she said, I am thankful that I was not by myself. She said, God was with me on my journey. And that's simply all I stopped to talk about tonight, brothers and sisters. In the same way here in Psalms number 34, we are introduced to David. David, the one that was favored by God. God, David, the one that was anointed to be the next king over Israel, David, the one who was playing the harp for King Saul, is now on run for his life. He's trying to make it. He's trying to survive. He don't know if he's going to make it because Saul, the one that once loved him, is now trying to take him out. And can't you imagine, brothers and sisters, how David must have felt? He is under pressure. He is under duress. He don't know how in the world he's going to make it. And so he's running for his life. He is running so much that he finds himself in enemy territory. And where he writes Psalms number 34, David had gone to the same enemy that he had fought against trying to find rescue even among his enemies. 
That's a bad situation, brothers and sisters, that you are running so hard that you run to your enemy's territory for protection. And here David is out here trying to blend in among other people, and he's recognized by the foreign king, and they recognize that it's David, and they begin to identify and call him out to the king. And so what did David do? David began to act crazy. He act like he lost his mind trying to blend in and to be put away out of danger trying to save his life. Y'all stay with me now. David was out here trying to survive, trying to win, trying to make it. And all of a sudden, David is passed away. And then he said God was able to deliver him. Ain't that something? After all that he had went through, after all of the sacrifice, all he losing his mind, David eventually makes it to a point that he said God was with him. And that's where we get to Psalms number 34 when David said, many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord shall deliver them from them all. That's good news, brothers and sisters, because while we may not be on a journey from Haiti or South America, while we may not be running for our life from Saul, the reality is this evening that all of us got some craziness going on in our life. And for some of us, we wondered even to ourselves how in the world we were going to make it to church tonight. How in the world can we pull ourselves together to be able to make it? Because sometimes life can throw you a curveball. Anybody been there before that you didn't know how you were going to make it, didn't know how you were going to survive, and the reality is many of us were hoping that 2021 was going to be a better year for us, but all of a sudden, we met more problems in 2021 than we met in 2020, and sometimes we just get tired along the way. Anybody felt like that before where you didn't know how you were going to make it, didn't know how you were going to survive, and yet you felt blown out, worn out, didn't know how in the world you were going to survive. But I come, brothers and sisters, with good news here from the life of David, good news from this story from Haiti that the same God that kept David and the same God that kept Yvonne on her journey to America is the same God that is working on our behalf. So when we look here in the text, we see that David is looking back retrospectively of his life. And so he begins to pen Psalms 34. He begins to write praises to God. He begins to talk about how he was able to survive in the midst of dangerous situations. He talked about how God sustained him in the midst of his danger. And so, brothers and sisters, I want to encourage you and let you know that we too can make it, that you too can survive. There are three things I want to tell you about God that I am quickly going to my seat. Number one, what we can learn from the text is that his eyes are on us. Look here in the text, the Bible reminds us here, he says in, in verse number uh, 17, he said, when the righteous cry for help, the Lord hears and delivers them. In verse 15, he says to us that the eyes of the Lord are towards the righteous. That's a shout upon our already, brothers and sisters. The Bible says that God's eyes are on us. That means God knows everything that's going on in our life, knows about everything that is happening even in our lives. So I think about that, brothers and sisters, I am always amazed that when I get on Facebook and Instagram or go to Google or to Amazon, when I look online, all of the time when I'm looking through my uh, social media, I see ads about stuff that I had some kind of interest in. You know, I'm looking online, I see ads, I may be searching for a mattress on Google, and all of a sudden I get on Facebook and I see ads about uh, mattresses on Facebook, ads on Instagram, and I begin to wonder about that, brothers and sisters, why in the world? Does Facebook and Instagram know that I was looking for a mattress over on Google? How in the world did they know that I was in the store looking at mattresses and I found out there is a thing called cookies? Anybody ever heard of cookies before? The cookies are files that are working behind the scenes. And so when you go to a website, they download a file to your computer. They're tracking your keystrokes. They're tracking the behavior that you have on the computer so they can build a profile of you. And so they know exactly what you are looking for. When you go to a website, they can populate it in front of your face. I kept thinking about that. It's amazing, brother, sister. You can be in a store and talk about something and pull your phone up five minutes later and the same thing will show up in front of you because the cookies are tracking you. Oh, brothers and sisters, when I thought about that, if the internet can have cookies to track you and know exactly what you need in your life, did anybody know that God got some spiritual cookies? 
that he can see what's going on in your life and he can track your steps and know everything you need anybody ever tried it before that you were crying to yourself talking down to yourself but all of a sudden you get a phone call from someone to say baby I just want to encourage you a text message from someone to say I just want to let you know that God has not forgotten about you because God got some spiritual cookies that is working in our life anybody thankful that God got his eye on you I wish I had some help on a Saturday night but God said I got my eye on you you may feel like you're by yourself you may feel isolated in your situation but I'm tracking your every move I know when you're sad I know when you act funny in front of everybody else try to act like you got it together but in the bed you cry yourself to sleep at night I wish I had some real people in here God said I'm tracking your step and I got my eyes on you the cookies anybody thankful that God got his eye on you that he knows what's going on in your life anybody thankful that God said I got my eyes on you so not only do we understand that God has his eye on us but then secondly brothers and sisters the text teaches us that his presence is with us that his presence is with us look in the text look in the text he says that God is near to the brokenhearted. Verse 18, the Lord is near to the brokenhearted and saves the crushed in spirit. So I think about that, brothers and sisters. It's, it's good to know that in moments when we feel like we are by ourselves, that we're reminded that God is with us. Uh, it, it's a blessing to know that in moments where we feel isolated and secluded, not only to know that God's eye is on us, but the fact that he said his presence is with us. That's comforting to know because David, if you read his account, there were moments when David was by himself in 1 Samuel. When he was running from the enemy, he was even questioned, David, why in the world are you by yourself when you are running from enemy territory? At the time, David didn't even think about this, but he wrote it in Psalm 34 because he understood that his survival was indicated because God's presence was with him. But you know, brothers and sisters, we have to look in the text. David gives us warning that sometimes we can miss the presence of God in our life. I mean, we can really miss God's presence. And you may be wondering, how do you miss God's presence? David gives us a couple of things that sometimes we've made the wrong turn in life. Look, look here in the text. David tells us that we need to turn away from evil. And sometimes we can have so much mess in our lives that we miss God's presence working with us. We can have so much toxic behavior and toxic things going on that it clutters our connection with God Almighty. And so David said, you got to turn away from evil. Don't let the problems and disappointment and challenges that happen in your life make you so bitter, nasty, and angry all the time that you are no longer fun to be around. No one, no longer able to be successful because you got mess in your life. So you got to turn away from the evil, turn away from the evil. But then not only does he say turn away, but then he said you got to turn down on some stuff. Look here in the text, the Bible teaches us in verse 13, he said you got to keep your tongue from evil and your lips from speaking deceit. Can we be honest tonight? Sometimes people can push us. Sometimes life and situations can push us to the edge where we want to give people a piece of our mind. I mean, I'll be honest, every now and then, the anointing of money bag, yo, come on me. And I look at my wrist and I say, I got time today to deal with the foolishness that people bring in my life. And every now and then, I want to give people a piece of my mind. Anybody ever been there before? That things have ticked you off so much that you want to give people a piece of your mind. But David said, don't miss God's presence by going off and going, cussing people out. He said, you don't have to act crazy. You, you don't have to talk crazy to people. He said, because God goes before you to fight your battle. People not worth your energy or your time, baby. Don't invest your time battling with people that are not worth it. Let God fight your battle. Don't you miss out on the movement of God, the presence of God in your life by dealing with stuff that's not even worth it your energy turn down on some stuff you don't have to cut up and act a fool you don't have to bust the windows out of nobody's car you don't have to ride up on people just turn down and let God fight your battle 
So not only are we turning away, not only are we turning down, but then we got to put some reverse in the thing, and then you got to turn up. Why are you saying, preacher, why in the world would I turn up? Because the Bible tells us that David knew about praying to God Almighty. And what David reminds us is that, wow, you don't have to deal with people and problems. You still need to talk to God. Anybody thankful that we have a relationship with God, that we can pray to him in the midnight hour when everybody else has left you by yourself, that you can have communication with God Almighty. So, brother, sister, I want to tell you, don't miss the presence of God. You got to turn away from some things. You got to turn down on some things, and you got to turn up towards God Almighty. I'm reminded of a story of a young man that had just began his career in seminary. My brother Michael was in seminary and he was excited because he felt God was calling him to preach the gospel. And Michael walked into his seminary class excited, had made it through the first three weeks, but about time he got to the second month of seminary, life began to happen. His wife got sick. Got a call back home. His mother had been diagnosed with stage four cancer. They had a baby and the child was going back and forth to the doctor. They were running out of money and Michael was beginning to say to the Lord, God, you brought me to seminary. And now I feel like I'm by myself here at seminary. Michael was frustrated. And one Monday morning, Michael makes his way to the class and the teacher is up teaching the class and he's talking about the omnipresence of God. And you can imagine Michael must have been frustrated because the teacher is saying that God is everywhere. And Michael is feeling like God is nowhere to be found. If be honest, some of us feel like that. Even right now, Michael sitting in class as the teacher keep on talking. He said, Professor, I don't mean to be rude, but can you show me on that map where God is behind you? Can you point God out on that map? The professor already knew what Michael was going through. He said, Michael, I can't find God's lat and longitude on this map, but he said, your iPhone has a special feature. He said, if you push the side button of it, you can ask Siri, what is my location? The student, Michael, looked back at the professor with a very nasty look. He said, come on, just indulge me in this moment. Michael pulled out his phone and looked with disgust, standing up in front of the class, and he pulled it out and said, Siri, what is my location? Siri began to calculate, and the series came back and said, you are at the seminary, and this is the Latin longitude of where you're located. He looked back at the professor, and the professor said, that is where God is, because anywhere there is somebody with a broken heart, God is right there by their side. Anybody thankful that God is right here by your side, even when you feel like you're by yourself? Anybody thankful that God is standing right here by your side. I dare you to pull your phone out and say, Siri, where's my location? Look back at your map because you'll find God standing right next to you. I wish I had a few witnesses in the house that understood the value of having God right by your side. Anybody know he can keep you in the midnight hour? The old folks said, Almighty God, can you just hold me? Anybody thankful that God can hold you? His presence. His presence. That's enough tonight. I get to have that myself. His presence to know that he's standing with you even in the midst of whatever is going on in your life. His presence meaning he's able to hold you when people feel like you're by yourself. His presence, when the phone calls stop coming in, his presence, anybody know that God is right there by your side? His presence. God said, I got my eye on you. My presence is with you. I'm going to my seat now. Finally, his power will keep you. His power can keep you. His power will keep you. Verse 19 reminds us again, many are the affliction of the righteous, but the Lord delivers him out of them all. Oh, brothers and sisters, that's, that's, that's enough to shout about already. Again, he says, many are the affliction of the righteous, but the Lord delivers him out of them all. What David teaches us, brothers and sisters, number one, is that God has the power to keep us. And I got to be honest, I, I wrestled with verse number 20 here in the text. Verse 20 
the Bible says he keep all his bones and not one of them is broken. I struggle with that because I feel like that at times Christians have broken bones. We have broken hearts. We have brokenness all around us. And I struggled with verse 20, but I kept on looking at the text, had to do some research. And what David was really telling us is that while you may experience some bruise and brokenness, that God will sustain you from being destroyed in the midst of what's going on. And I want to tell you, brothers and sisters, that God can sustain you in the midst of whatever is going on in your life. Not only that, he says in verse 5, he said, those that look to him will find joy in the midst of their life. Oh, brothers and sisters, every now and then, life may not change immediately. Things might not immediately get well for you, but I thank God that he can sustain you in the midst of whatever is going on in your life. You be the one walking around still having joy, still singing with the praise team, still waving your hand at church, even though life is crazy all around you because God has sustaining power. Any sustaining individuals in the house tonight that know that your life is going crazy right now, but God still bless you to have a peace of mind that you can still go to work every day, still put one foot in front of the other. God said, I can sustain you in the midst of it all. Not only does he have sustaining power, oh, brothers and sisters, but I'm confident that God got some snatching power. That means that he can immediately turn some situations around. And that's why David said that God can deliver you from them all. And so don't miss that sometime. I know we talk about sustaining all the time, but every now and then God can show up and immediately pull you out of some mess and save your life. Anybody ever been snatched before? I know my parents snatched me before when I was getting smart and getting out of order, but God has the power to snatch you and pull you out of some craziness in your life. That's good news, brothers and sisters. I'm gone now. There's a good part of the text that I don't want to miss. Verse 8, David reminds us, he says here to us, he said, Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man who takes refuge in him. I thought about that, y'all. David said, Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Now, in order for you to be able to say that something is good from this way, that means you have to have an experience with it before. David said, oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. I'm reminded, brothers and sisters, I remember earlier on in becoming a vegan, I traveled to Atlanta, Georgia. I like to eat, y'all, and I used to, a few years ago, I preached, I told everyone that I eat a chicken a day, but life has changed now, and I don't eat a chicken a day anymore. I went vegan, and I was in Atlanta, Georgia, and I got some recommendations from a friend. They, they told me to try a restaurant called Viva La Vegan. And I began to look online. It had thousands of reviews of people talking about how good the food was. And so I said, I'm going to give it a try. I, I went to Viva La Vegan, pulled up. I looked at the restaurant. I said, oh, Lord. It didn't look like anything. It didn't look like it was able to have great food. I stood in line, ordered my food, and got the food, got in the car, and started driving back to my hotel. I placed the food on the passenger side of the car and the smell kept radiating into my nose. I was hungry, y'all. I was driving through Atlanta, Georgia, trying to get back to my hotel. All of a sudden, I couldn't resist anymore. I reached over into the bag and I pulled out the burger that I had ordered. I took a bite into the burger and I said, mm, 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 mm. The burger was so good. I kept on driving and I was eating the burger. By the time I looked up, the burger was gone. Then I pulled out the tacos that I had ordered. Don't judge me, y'all. I pulled out the tacos that I had ordered, and they, too, were very good. As a matter of fact, I, by this time, I got lost on the way to the hotel. I just pulled over to a parking lot and began to have a little dinner in the car because the food was so good. And I didn't stop right there, y'all. I began to text and call folks and like, man, I just tried this restaurant and the food is so good. Guess what I did? The next day, I went back to Viva La Vegan, pulled up and ordered more items off the menu, tried it again, and the food was so good that I could not resist eating it over and over again. But brothers and sisters, when I began to think about Viva La Vegan, it don't have anything on my mighty God, the one that has saving power, the one that is able to sustain us 
in the midst of whatever is going on. And that's why David was able to say, oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Anybody tasted him before and know that he is able to keep you in the midst of your storm. Anybody tasted him before and know that he's a mind regulator. Anybody tasted him before and know that he'll be with you in the middle of your battle. That's why David said, I will bless the Lord at all times and his praises shall continue be in my life. Anybody thankful? Can we just do a review this evening? Anybody tried him before and know that he can keep you? Why don't you clap your hands and give some sign and say our God is able? Anybody know he can keep you? Anybody know he's watching over you when you should have lost your mind? When you should have given up? When everybody counted you out? When haters were hating on you? Anybody know that the Lord is good? Come on, let's give him some praise. Because one Friday, he passed the ultimate taste test. He went down in the grave. But anybody know early? Come on, help me now, early. Sunday morning, he got up with all power in his hand. Anybody know he's able? Why don't you holler out, won't he do it? Won't he keep you? Won't he bless you? Won't he provide for you? Won't he guide you? Won't he able you? Won't he assist you? Won't he do it? Won't he do it? Won't he, won't he, won't he, won't he, won't he do it? Anybody know he's able? I dare you to stand on your feet and tell God, thank you for keeping you in the storm. Thank you for keeping you from COVID-19. Thank you for giving you your right mind. Thank you for waking you up this morning. Thank you. Won't he do it? Won't he do it? Any won't he doers in the house that can tell God thank you for keeping you in the midst of it all? Won't he do it? Won't he do it? Won't he do it? God said, I got my eyes on you. I'm with you. I got the power to sustain you. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. God is able to sustain you.